Happy Tuesday, everybody! We're live! Uh, what? Who's that? Wait, Ron, there's somebody between us. Yeah. I would <laughs> never come between you guys. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm gonna call that a lie, because you already are. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeff Ganada. Jeff Ganada's here joining us on Tuesday. The, the, the OG GM of the Dungeon Run. How you doing, buddy? It's so good to see you. I'm doing great it's wonderful to see you guys i miss you i love you i know, I, I, know. I can't believe it's believe it's been so long i know how's 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 it going it's going great it's going yeah, great i mean it's so really it's good. a weird time out here in los angeles as i'm sure you know but i mean it's going <laughs> great <laughs> it is a weird time everywhere that yes, is true I agree. that is true i agree it is it is odd uh i am uh i'm delighted to be here we're we're like we're coming up on five years since we started, right? No, I know. That's I know. I, How does so, that happen? Uh, uh, time, time passes, and and time we, just we passes. get older. And stupid time, stupid time. Uh, dinosaurs. I'm just gonna go with dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> you you missed some great chat beforehand, friends. We got into the craziness into of it. of. Yeah. Do you know how long, how short a period of time we as a planet have known about dinosaurs at all? Uh, it's like two. It's 200 years. We're coming up on the 200 year anniversary of figuring out that dinosaurs right. even existed. Can you imagine that? The, uh, that seems really short. The plays me. that Shakespeare could have written if he knew oh. about dinosaurs. Oh, come on! Yeah, that. <laughs> the plays that Shakespeare could have written if he knew about space. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, that's true, too. Dungeon Speedrun says, I blame the Chrono Dragons. You know, so do I, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is, uh, that's a fair, fair, fair yeah. go-to for yeah. that. Uh, yeah. My first question for the three of us is, uh, have we all been playing Baldur's Gate 3? Because I've been playing a lot of it lately. and It's so good. It's so good. I think I'm on my seventh run through. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, oh no jelly. God. Some of it, well, I, I got to give, you know, some of them were like, I'm going to have no companions. I'm going to play Gith. I'm going to play them hardcore Gith. They have no companions. Go hardcore straight to the crash. I love it. Straight to the crash. <laughs> well, some of those end real, real quick. Like, oh, I even yeah. went one where I was like, I'm just going to be on the side of the big bad. I'm just going to be on the side of the big bad and take everything. And it was like, after act one, it was like, yeah, you're, you're done. My no, no <laughs> you 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 aligned with the wrong side, sir. Yep. Sorry. Um, I, the craziest thing about that game uh, is, uh, I think you, Ron, you and I were talking about it while we were doing Dungeon Run. That's right. Yep. Because we were playing it in early access and like just just Act One. Yeah. Right. And we were like, ah, I don't know about this part. They, there's some things they're not doing great. But boy, man, that game came together when they released it. It, it really boy. did. Now, my question is this. Have you created any Dungeon Run characters using uh, Baldur's Gate? Because I have. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that was one of the first <laughs> things I did when I played it was like, I made, you know, I, I made a warlock. And yeah. I, <laughs> my question, have you created Joral in, in Baldur's Gate 3? <laughs> <laughs> I've not created Joral. And how many I'm times has he died? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with Joral. Is, is, uh, it's not very fun to play as him because everything doesn't work out. You know? Angel Devilson yeah. wants to know if you created Whitebeard. Actually, that's a fantastic question. Ooh, you really I could do be. Whitebeard. That's a good idea. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Ideas I still haven't for future done streams. I think I'll go would be pretty Ugo. easy. I don't yeah. know if they haven't had... done it. You haven't done an Ugo? I haven't done Ugo yet. No, I oh, wanted to do that like... for like with 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 the like audience. You know, I wouldn't want to do that yeah. just by myself. Yeah. My note because I did create James Quillis because they do have Great Old One Warlocks in there. They're available. Yeah. yeah. My only critique is that they don't have enough awkward social interactions to really feel like James Quillis. <laughs> so that's funny. All of your social interaction <laughs> options are so smooth or sexy or or yeah. badass, and you're just sort of There's like. No there's no vomiting on yourself <laughs> there's option. no vomiting on yourself option <laughs> and he nervously looks away and then walks into the corner <laughs> which was always super interesting because warlocks are charisma based so it was always interesting that Je that james was so awkward all the time it's like you have the charisma of of someone who should be able to do all of this but the well, you know, different kinds of charisma right? yeah of course, of course. yes he had awkward, he had awkward trust riz. me i know he had awkward <laughs> riz james uh that's yeah. correct and i mean i like to say actually that he had uh the only the only charisma based skill he was proficient in was deception and how he got away with that was literally no one paid him a second mind <laughs> so, <laughs> he's like that guy no he, he's not up to anything whatever <laughs> It's like, yes, that's right. Performance and persuasion. No, 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 no. Deception. Yeah, he can lie, which is ugh, gross. But, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> 
Friends, we are so excited to be here with you all today. Um, it, we, we wanted to have this chat uh, with Jeff here because it is a special time. And we're going to get into, we have a lot of announcements coming in the next few weeks. Uh, some which we can't share today. I just want to tease that. But as Jeff said, we're coming up on five years next month uh, of the Dungeon Run. And it's been a really special, important time for us. We've been very busy uh, behind the scenes. We like to... As we've joked before, we're we're like the ducks in the pond where you you can't see our feet, but they are going like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're Ron, like we're the, the gorilla in the, the pond. ocean. That's we're the, the gorilla. <laughs> we're Godzilla in the ocean. That's right, Godzilla <laughs> in the that. ocean, or the cursed dukes in the pond. Uh, that's correct. <laughs> I love that. Um, give us all the announcements, says Melodies of Old. I'm seeing all the names in chat. It's so good to see you. New new. New names and old. Black Akari. Shayberry's here. It's good to see you, Pug of Cryde. Hi, everybody. Um, but we just wanted to say that just what's coming uh, soon is... Hmm, Morgan, I, yeah. I wanted to write this out. Come on, Marvel. Come I, on, Marvel. I know, I know. The way this show started, as we all know, we've come a really long way. And uh, we're extremely grateful to Caffeine and our originators and how the show began. We would not be here. We would have never met each other without it. Uh, but the show has been a labor of love and and creator-controlled and creator-born for the last th three years. And uh, we're really excited because um, that's going to continue. Uh for, for as long as you guys support us, for as long as we want to keep telling stories together. And it opens up so many more ways. Some things have happened in the shadows uh, that have really opened up a lot of the ways and a lot of the possibilities of what we can bring to you, how we can tell stories together, and how we can continue to grow this world and with each other. And we can start to talk a little bit about what that means, but it's really exciting for us and we wanted to kind of be here with all of you and share this news. We have more uh, announcements, as I said, coming up. I think you're going to be able to see the dungeon run more places. Uh, hopefully continue to grow audience and stuff like that. And we'll get into what that means soon, as soon as we're able to. Um, I'm not being mean. There are just literal paperwork that says what I can say. Um, and things of that nature. But it's it's really exciting to us, to the entire team, and to to the whole family that we've grown so so well over the last few years. Um, but yeah, uh, and that's why we wanted to be here today is to sort of look back and to look forward. Uh, I know last year we did a survey uh, that continues to ask you guys like why you watch us. What is it you really? We want to give you what you know what you're here to see, and we listened full, you heard your your full throated. Uh, um, words uh <laughs> your, 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 yeah, yeah your full-throated opinions and have tried our best to bring you all of that and we're going to continue to do so and um and i think we're going to i think you'll notice some more interesting options uh coming forward because i think we're going to do another survey we're going to bring you some different types of streams as well we've been very as i've mentioned we of course want to bring you more more episodes around the table of more actual play and we're going to be doing that as soon as we can but we're also very busy uh, in the in the off time as well. Uh, so in that meantime, we're going to be doing more dungeon rewatches. Jeff, we rewatched uh, Amy's first episode of Mending a Magic last week. Oh, fun! I think we're going to do episode two next uh, tomorrow as well. That was I hadn't rewatched it since we did it. Uh, I will never forget watching the first episode of, of Mending of Magic because you uh, couldn't watch it. Wait, your eyes I, weren't working. I, I, I <laughs> have one it. eyeball. <laughs> Yeah, we we definitely so. talked about that at the beginning of the stream. We're sort of like we, we went behind the scenes a little bit. It was like, all right, just so you know, I think it was only supposed to be a two week vacation that you were on yeah. originally. And then we were like, Amy, can you make it four weeks? <laughs> can you yeah. turn this two shot into a four shot? Uh, yeah, I was yes. supposed to go on an actual just like a, a vacation, a, right. a vacation vacation, right. you know, um, <laughs> with my family. And yes. then my eye exploded and then it turned into... <laughs> when's jeff coming back we don't know uh so <laughs> what yeah, that was a scary for time us? for me but uh, it was just amazing to have amy vorpal like the yes incredible talent and charm of amy vorpal jumping in and keeping the keeping the train rocking on the track um and uh man what an what an awesome yeah series of episodes that those were yeah they um, they were yeah. a lot of fun and just watching and revisiting jessica's brick by the way jessica lynn parsons is in chat i see you lurking oh, hey. <laughs> I miss oh, you, hey, Jess. Jess. 
happy almost five years, Jessica Lynn Parsons. Uh, but we have we we have continued to ha- are going to have a lot of exciting news coming up, and yeah. we wanted to just continue to to ask you all. And Jeff, I know you've been, you know, kind of considering a lot of how you want to continue. I mean, it's it's difficult to to get you out here in person sometimes, but that mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that the dungeon run is far from your mind, and it never has. We've been telling people that it's like, no, Je- Jeff's around, guys. Uh, I yes, I definitely am, and um, I uh, you know part of what you've been dancing around. I mean, it, it, we'll continue to dance around it, but to <laughs> maybe give a little more form to it is is you know. Uh, the fact that you guys have been able to continue the show and spectacularly so, just just wonderfully so, um, has made me incredibly happy. But it has only been in a because we had a very narrow uh, avenue to do that. Yes, and uh, we are now in the position where Dungeon Run and all that it entails is uh, much more in our control and much more uh, masters of our own fate, uh, which I think is really wonderful. And I will reiterate what Morgan just said too, which is it's all because of you out there who are making this possible and continuing to support uh, us and them. Um, and the gratitude for that, uh, we, we there are no words to express it. it like. Morgan said we this is a labor of love it has has started out as a labor labor of love uh and it only became more so when um you know we didn't have the support of a a big company behind us and yeah. it became in our own hands um but now we have this ability to really uh be the masters of our own fate and and uh do uh kinds of exciting things with with the dungeon run and I don't want to um overpromise here uh, but um, I uh, am actively, literally every day, and have been for a long time, thinking about these characters and or the characters of you know the heroes of Bingle characters and that that first uh, story. Um, and I'm uh, I have been working on a novel uh, with those characters, and he said it. Uh, literally, <laughs> literally every he day did say I'm it. I'm working on it every day. Um, and uh, I, you know, I shudder to talk about it because I, it, it's it's a it's a Sisyphusian work <laughs> thing to push that boulder up a hill. But uh, and I hope to finish. Uh, I I plan to finish. I'm loving it. I am loving the process. I have no idea when I will be done. But um, these our adventures, uh, the characters that these two gentlemen brought to life, and and you know the rest of the cast brought to life, are in my head literally every day and um it has been so much fun i i really hope that uh i can get it across the finish line and get it to the people that have made it possible for us to even talk about that um because what ha- what i what i've done so far i'm really proud of and it's like a really interesting way to revisit this story and kind of do it in a a way that isn't a live play D and D story. So I'm able to kind of play with some things and do some things in different order or in a different way and split the team up in interesting ways. And so, um, you can make me sound I, cooler if you want. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, that's just one of the things that's sort of percolating. Uh, that's not the reason I'm here. That's not the reason no. we're we're talking. It's it's more a celebration of how far we've come, yeah. and you know, we wish we could say another. There's another big announcement that's going to be happening very soon. Yes. I, I wish we could talk about it, but I think it's going to be really cool, and I think it's going to give uh, even longer legs to to what we're doing here, and and um, it's a testament to Ron and Morgan. And their efforts and uh, the, all, the whole uh, cast and the whole team, Absolutely. but specifically these two guys uh, who have put in so much energy and love and care uh, into what we're making and what we have made. Um, so I'm just so delighted to still be involved with the Dungeon Run, even you know over here in Denver, out of the out of the center of the storm. Um, <laughs> 
See what I did there? I did. Oh, hey, I, did. I, I heart you, buddy. I heart you. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop talking now. But I, I'm just, I, you know. I couldn't have I, said it better. I should let you talk more yeah. often, honestly. I, yeah. I, I think that was far better than what I said. <laughs> I feel like that every day about Jeff. And his <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, you can probably still see. Like, I live every day mm -hmm. with, you know, Dungeon Run all around me. You know, it's... Uh, all, my whole office is is covered in fan art and yeah. um, stuff. And like I said, I'm thinking about that first campaign literally every day. Um, it is it is the time that I cherish the most when I get to come down and hack away at at, at the novel. And um, I'm really hoping that you know the the community um, enjoys revisiting the story in a new way when it when it hopefully happens. Let's knock on wood. Yeah. Um, but uh, over and above that, you know, what Ron has done with with his campaign and what um, what the community is still um, making happen, uh, I think it's just so cool. And now we're really gotten to a point where the future is wide open yeah. for what what can happen, and I think that's really really exciting. Well said. Seraphy says, Heroes of Bingle, the Joral perspective. I, I'm in on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did I mention that? The entire thing takes place from Joral's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's going to be very depressing. Book. Very short yeah. and very depressing. <laughs> well, I always thought Joral would be a really good narrator, uh, narr narrator for, like, a campaign setting. Oh, like, my if God. If we ever did a campaign <laughs> setting, he's the perfect person to be like... <laughs> Here's all about these things that you were wondering about. I don't know if they're true. I just heard them. The Joral novella. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. Um, well, gosh, I kind of want to ask, I mean, since you've been diving so deep back into this, and I just want to echo as well it, to realize you feel crazy. Like we work on so many projects. We're actors, we're writers, we're producers, we're content creators. You work on so many things that when something comes along like this, you almost feel crazy at first because you're like, is this as good as I think it is? I think it is. <laughs> and yeah. to see someone like Jeff, someone like Katie, someone like Ron, someone like Jessica, someone like Jared, and looking at each other and our crew as well, looking at each other going like, this is great, guys. Um, and to have it continue to live with you. And I'll be honest, I rewatch old I don't rewatch. I don't rewatch whole episodes, but I go back and rewatch certain scenes, uh, mm. like you know, at least once a week or something. Like like something will pop into my mind. What was the last one that I did? Um, some of the stuff around uh, the city of Thorn uh, with, with with Ron and uh, and it was the feast of of uh, of Ugo being de de declared war chief and there was the character of the of the rage barbarian bard uh, that Katie that, that Lily met that whole sequence and that ended in uh, James's incredible conversation with with Braca which is still one of my favorite scenes that that we did the whole mm. the whole campaign yeah that's so good um, there's so much that. When revisiting it, it was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this whole wow. thing. Wow, you know, it's uh, it's a lot. It's amazing. What's it's been? A, it's strange what your brain remembers and what yes. it, it it lets go away, and then that's yeah. why we live in such an interesting time where we can go and watch exactly minute second for second what actually happened, uh, rather than you know having to try to recall what happened. Because my brain oh, makes stuff up, and I'm like, "That's oh wait, that's way different than I remember." It. Wow, <laughs> yeah. I'm really grateful that we even have that because yeah. I, if you guys recall, you know, Caffeine was a live streaming service. They and before Dungeon Run, they had no VOD archive. Nothing. There was no <laughs> record. There they had no to be recording. talked into it. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Can you yep. imagine? There's a <laughs> very real universe where yes all that stuff would have been lost and yes. i'm just so grateful that we have it yes even though i i'm sure you guys agree with this but it i have physical pain from the rules errors i made in the first episode like <laughs> physical pain because so many people just dip into that first episode and see me screw up oh. and like Ah, oh, it hurts me so much. It hurts me so much. But I've here's watched, what I've learned I've, about rules, Jeff. We have to break them all the time of no, what, I, what we're doing with. It, I like, know, but gotta like, let you go, man. You gotta let that go. 
folks that are super into D and D will yeah. tune in and they'll be like, Oh, this dungeon master doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm not watching any more <laughs> of this crap, you know? And that's what hurts me because uh, yeah. if anybody, anybody who's really into the rule set, there are people that are really into that and they want to watch a show where the, the DM knows what he's doing. Oh. Sure. And I confused the three by three, three point five rules with five E rule in the first episode a couple of times. And I will never forgive myself. I will never, I, ever forgive myself. Having watched a lot of other actual plays, I, we are not alone. I think it. No. I, I think it's specific, and, and and certainly, and it's also just. I think it's also uh, cathartic for other DMs that watch the show to go like, "Oh yeah, they did mess that up." It was just sort of like you know, I yeah. mess up things all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. I didn't know how to use hex in the first episode. I remember that very yeah. clearly. Um, but also, it's also one of those where like the the type of people who come in and that's what they watch your show for. Like, I'm not sure we're the right show for that. Like, that's a fair you know, point. Right. our that's show a fair is point. more about a uh, story and role play uh, and deep role play, and that's we had uh, whole episodes. I think we do that right? well. I think we do that well. I think we had whole yeah. episodes where I think we rolled the dice uh, less than five times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well. Yeah. That is the that's the little silver lining I try to remind myself is like if they if they saw that rule screw up they got pretty deep into the episode yeah you yeah, know yeah. and that means yeah. they're they're watching you know I think that's yeah. that's we've talked about it a lot too I I think because because you brought it up back in the day where the higher level we got and and Ron has by the way accepted this oh, mantle man. beautifully the higher level that we got it becomes extremely hard to balance and extremely hard to challenge these almost literal demigods that are the characters yeah. but what you <laughs> What you did and what Ron has continued is like, oh, I'm just going to go straight emotional trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the lever that you have. Right? That's right. That's the, yeah. Yep. It's, yeah. it's like, oh, then it's all going to be moral dilemmas and emotional yeah. trauma from here on out. And you're like, you oh, wanna... God. <laughs> here's, a, here's, a, here's a perfect example. The last battle of the recent chapter uh, with Razar, uh, the Shadow Mane, who is a lion kin vampire lord. Like when I built him you know and we just released it on the patreon so yes thank you for bringing that up i meant to get to that you can go take a look at that um but uh and i'll be releasing more in the next coming uh, next couple of days but um when i first build him built him uh, he's an offensive uh cr12 creature uh and a defensive cr20 creature Um, (laughs) and you have to build them that way and that's before i applied the demigod of blood template that i built (laughs) uh on top of that so that shifted the cr about five in both directions so at level what you guys were eight right is that right yeah yes correct eight well now nine uh because i forgot to tell people about that you're now nine but um at yeah at, at at that you're fighting at level nine cr 17 creature uh and it's because the gods who watch are dropping things that are just i have to encounter okay well the le- le- the, the levers have to now change yeah, and and, totally. and as you'll see in that last battle it lasts basically two full rounds you kill him i mean you definitely killed him i didn't buff him in, in terms of hit points or anything but there were some other things that were like it was emotional trauma lever that i had to sort of pull in order to make a two round combat feel dangerous and 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 purposeful so yeah yeah definitely well and that's the more fun stuff i think yeah. anyway you know, yeah for sure ju- the juicier oh my yeah. god you know the the stakes being yeah. narrative you know rather than just yep. you know mechanical i think yeah. are much more fun anyway i Agreed. i mean yeah it's speaking of rewatches i maybe the one episode that i did rewatch in its entirety recently because i couldn't turn it off this was a couple months ago was the episode after spoiler alert the death of fahima where we just talked about what to do mm-hmm. for three and a half hours and it was fascinating <laughs> and it was because that was be true right <laughs> yes That's the, like you you zoom in on that time because that moment that happened was so impactful like you need to know what's going to happen yeah for it sure. was like a model un session but but really mm-hmm. interesting <laughs> I mean, because mm-hmm. it was literally like we were going hey, in now. these waves of oh i'm sorry so, sorry to the model un uh, folks out there <laughs> yeah come on now <laughs> it's super interesting and i would i would i would challenge you to do it because it is very interesting <laughs> Right, I'm gonna go to my nearest high school and join Model UN. <laughs> uh-uh. hey, they have collegiate. There, it, it goes all the way to collegiate. <laughs> okay, got and it. International, international, even. I've won some awards in that in that. So <laughs> let's good. let's. All right, 
Ron's got your backs. <laughs> I do. <laughs> for a long time, I was thinking about going into UN politics. That was Amazing. really a thing that I was thinking. Model UN is D&D for people who don't like dragons. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and what? Come on. What do dragons do to you? That's so true. Um, I mean, so is, so is fantasy football. <laughs> That's, That's true. very true. Yeah. Jeff, I want to, like, in terms of your revisiting and everything like that, what's been... What's been your best surprises? And then what do you think has been like your best like challenges in terms of like, oh, how am I going to do this in this new format? Anything like that? I mean, I don't know how much to say. Like, no, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, but, but. Um, Just in terms I of like say, things that jump out to you. Yeah. I mean, I think that the the biggest thing for me in, in sitting down to this project and like really deciding I'm going to do this, it was fully embracing the opportunity to do something that isn't a tabletop story, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because by the nature of the game, it's get a bunch of people together and then move them through the world. Boop, boop, mm -hmm. boop, 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 boop. Uh, and we did some fun things where, you know, things happen concurrently or whatever, but, um, you know, with, with a different kind of storytelling model, you can really, you have the opportunity to actually figure out, okay, well, what's the best, what is what is it, the best version of this story? What, best, that's a, st a stupid thing to say, but I mean, what is the unshackled version of this story? Love what it. is the story where I don't have to worry about five people being in the same room all the time. I can really figure out like, oh, well maybe this person is over here right now and maybe, these things that happen sequentially actually actually happen concurrently and maybe we d these people don't even meet for a little while and their meeting is more interesting because it happened after this big thing and that kind of stuff um shuffling that around and figuring that out has been really fun mm. and really um challenging in a way too because and then like how much back stuff to add in and and uh um yeah that's i mean it's, it's, that yeah. was one of my immediate thoughts was it was obvious <laughs> it was obvious once we, once we got to episode 105 or whatever it was <laughs> that you had planned so much from the very beginning that i would that i would wonder yeah to tell it in a narrative style how much how much of that like do you tell that up front or do you save it for when the for when the characters learn it literally that episode where the where the shaz and Zhao queen just laid it all out i i think my yeah. jaw didn't come off the floor for a full hour and a half <laughs> uh well and, yeah, yeah i mean i think i think the, the the decision i've made is to is to tell it in a very constrained um character POV. So yeah. uh, kind of like Game of Thrones, I guess, if you've read the novels, that yeah. each chapter is from a different character's POV. And so I'm doing that uh, as well. You're um, almost not but... aware of all, the, of all the wheels turning around. Exactly. So yes. what one person thinks in one chapter might be contradicted by what another person knows in another chapter. Yeah. And there's a fun in that, right? There's a fun, fun. I, th I think as a reader, I enjoy that when I, I'm putting the pieces together, you know, as, as I'm uh, going through the story, uh, in the same way that hopefully you guys were as players, right? That's the fun is like making those connections and going, oh, but I figured out that she's her and all that stuff. It's the version um, of the secret rooms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's yeah. like, yeah, this has been secret roomed away from the rest of the party or from the entire party or anything like that. Right. Yes. I mean, those are the, those are the things I most enjoy reading or e even in films and TV shows when the, creators put a lot of faith in the audience to not have to spell everything out specifically or at least let like leave those breadcrumbs so that you can kind of construct it yourself in your head so that's what i'm trying to do and um I like it. i said it's been it's been really really fun it's i, I honestly wish i could only work on this like i <laughs> i really love it i really love it and it's been so much fun like like i said revisiting all of the brilliance that you guys brought to the table and you know, uh, just kind of thinking through all of all of that stuff and and being in that world again has just been so much fun. I remember thinking back about 
like what it was, where the inspiration for this whole story came from. And I, I it, it was that, that vulnerable world thing. And I, I, yeah. I'm, I've always marveled at how your brain made that jump. It, it was, it was, you know, the, this, this theory of annihilation, right. Of, mm -hmm. of kind of Nick Bostrom. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. A and, um, yep. And you, the fact that you were able to disseminate and turn that into a fantasy setting, into a storyline, it's a her Herculean task, sir, uh, and and something that I will be impressed by till the end of my life. Uh, I I refer oh. to you often as a no a novelite DM. So like you you have the 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 you know you look at things like when reading a novel uh, you are you're well read you've read a lot of novels that makes sense that that's uh the way that you but to see you succeed at dming in that manner still is as a dm myself is mind-boggling because i can't do that like that hmm. uh, i cannot create in that fashion um like create something so well connected and then move it seamlessly as other people come in and sort of mess up quote unquote, mess up the things that you, that you set. Uh, whereas for me, it's very much been like, okay, I know these things are true, but they're going to change because I know that our characters are going to do things that change those particular rules. So to, 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 it makes a lot more work for DMs like you, but I think it's also such a incredible way to go about DMing, especially if you can pull it off as successfully as you can. Well, I very much appreciate you guys saying that I I'm humbled. Um, I I really admire the way you DM Ron. I think it's oh, I think it's much more um skillful and um uh, um uh I don't even want to I don't know player friendly is maybe the wrong word but like I just <laughs> love I love He's not you. he's not friendly, trust me. Well, I, in a, in <laughs> yes, way, I am. Like, oh, okay. in way, no, I'm kidding. I'm just, kidding. <laughs> but let me let me just say this. I if I had known we were gonna do 105 of them or whatever it was, I would never have been able to do it. Right. right? Mm -hmm. I, I said that before. Like mm -hmm. you you know, it was I, the start of COVID thing like, where it was like, it's just two weeks. It's just two weeks. It's just yeah. two weeks. No, I'm sorry. The, the whole, the, I mean, the only reason I even said yes to doing it was because it was only going to be 10 episodes. We we're going to do <laughs> right. 10. And I was like, yeah. okay, I can wrap my head around 10. Yeah. But then it was yeah. like, well, okay, if we're, if I'm if we're building a world, I better know what the hell's going on in it. And then, and then you just sort of like kind of snowball a little bit, you right. know? And I think, I think that's the, that's if I have a secret, that's my secret is that mm. like, don't let yourself even, even in writing right now, I'm like, just finish this scene and just mm -hmm. finish this chapter. And then just mm -hmm. finish, just finish this sentence, you know, mm -hmm. like, just like it has to, I have to chunk it that way. I have to like, and you want to know the big stuff and, uh, you know, I, there was a, there was a point where, not to give too much away, but it, it, there was a point where uh, I wasn't sure I would even be able, be allowed to write a dungeon run book. Mm -hmm. um, and my wife was like, well, why don't you just do a different story mm -hmm. as the, as your first novel? And I was like, I can't, like, I can't, like I, the, I, the only reason I feel like I'm even able to do this or work on this is because I lived it already yeah. and so now i i have this safety net of knowing it can stand on its two feet yeah. you know what i mean yeah and so like I, I, so I, that all of that is to say i appreciate you guys complimenting me but i i i feel like i am just as much um trying to get to the end of the sentence as everybody else you know <laughs> I, I i feel like it is it, it was it was one of those magical things where it just sort of kept going and then it it i was able to keep it going and and your all of your Im, impact on it and it shaped and it molded and ron you and i have talked about this a lot that feeling of like oh i was setting myself up for something i didn't know i was setting yes. myself up for yes. in a lot I've of ways thought about you that know? so many times yeah yeah yeah, yeah. constantly think about that it's little it, little get little it's gifts happened you, so many times little yeah. gifts you give future future yeah. you that you don't even know yeah. about and that you, you don't even don't know. know why you're doing yeah. it like you yep. like i this thing feels right. right i don't know why but i'm gonna do that mm -hmm. i'm not really gonna overthink it and then like mm -hmm. 
let me you tell know, you. Two months later, you go, oh, oh wow, that was the perfect thing I needed for yeah. now. Right. And I didn't know yeah. I was giving it to myself later, but uh, yeah. here it is. Let me tell yeah, you, cool. currently DMing uh, about 20 people for Patreon, uh, which has been going for over a year now. Which having, is insane it's to almost me, by a year the way. Pretty, We're having such an amazing time, and it's and it's drawn so many of the mem members of the community closer. And I've been so impressed with all of them and how welcoming and wonderful they are with each other. Um, but trying to have fun with and have meaningful sessions with 20 different characters uh it is i i'm i'm leaving so many dangling threads because mm -hmm. i'm like i'm gonna need something here i'm yeah. gonna need something here mm -hmm. and uh, uh yeah that, that that's yeah that that is i've taken that to heart in so many ways uh, there are so many dangling threads in in season two that we will never get to we just unless unless we do this for 20 years we'll <laughs> never get to them right. just because i it was J jared and i were both just like well we got to have these in case we need them for the future right so let's let's sprinkle these things um and it's really interesting to me especially because we have such an interactive audience where the audience sometimes will tell you which threads they want to see not dangle anymore and which ones are really juicy for them to keep dangling. And I love that aspect. Like, especially when people, the, what, what's been happening recently in the discord is a lot of like red string theorying, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and I love that. Oh, I love it because it helps. Yeah. It, it helps me as a DM sort of realize what it is that's really driving, you know, one example recently in the last chapter we were in a, a mansion and at the end of it, people were like, that was the spookiest haunted mansion kind of thing I'd ever experienced. And when I went in, that wasn't the goal. It wasn't the goal to make right. it like this spooky haunted mansion thing. It was just the players, the audience itself. They were all reacting to that. And I was like, okay, so this is the thing I can really, it's a dangling thread. I sort of gave myself real early that I can now just pull on and, and rely on. So oh, I love I, it. When I it could not agree with that more. I mean, it is, it, what a gift to have that immediate yeah. feedback from an audience and realize what's working, realize what they're getting. And when, you know, and, and you get information even when people are theorizing things that are not anywhere close because you, right. you go, oh, sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's yeah. perfect. Sometimes that's yeah. what you want. You want there yeah. to be red herrings. But, yeah. you know, it, I benefited so much from not just the players' reactions, but that weekly feedback, the weekly uh, discourse in the discord yes. uh, and the, you know, people doing all the feedback that we got week to week, it was so immensely helpful in crafting. Okay. This needs to be accentuated more. This, yeah, this can, I can pull back on the, all that stuff. It's just, it's what a gift it was. What a gift. Yeah. All those things of uh, like, you know, you, you wonder if like, you feel like you're playing certain things deeply but then you're like, oh, they spotted it right away, <laughs> you know, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. we're such a, such a, a a a an observant and talented audience, and and that yeah. again speaks to to you, beautiful community members, of just the amount of love and attention you put into watching the show, which is yeah. amazing. So, yeah. I mean, you watching the show and your feedback literally makes us better DMs and better players. So Absolutely. thank you so much for that gift because oh, that's my. truly a gift. And Liam draws brings up the Urtenfurt riddle craziest week of my life <laughs> maybe not but literally one of the craziest weeks of my life was the week of the earth trying to solve the urtenfurt riddle oh my god i am immensely proud of that i'll sometimes yeah. go back in the discord and read the that I... urtenfurt channel and with everybody you know and uh i've just... never seen anything like it in <laughs> in in internet content i've never seen anything like it uh, it was wild. <laughs> it was the coolest. Thing. I thought for sure, like 15 minutes was people are going to suss it out. And the fact that it endured as long as it did. And it like, it, it just makes me so happy. And the people were enjoying that and, yes. and, and digging into it and the cool, all the cool theories and ideas and wild. Um, it's just, that was, that was a, a real highlight for me as well. Yeah. Well, speaking of world building and interactivity, um, I'm springing this on you two a little bit, but I just want, oh. I'm not, we don't need to come up with an answer right now, but I want to do it with the audience here in front of us too. Cause it's something I've been thinking about is we've been building out this universe so beautifully and we have shown connections through the story and how things are. And 
I think it's almost time to, like, we have Ein and we have Mechus and Toss, but it's almost time to, like, really give a name to world, mm. universe, what is mm. it? and that's a good question and i and i think this is something that we're gonna have to do with the help of the community and Mm -hmm. and and really kind of give some time to because yeah i i think about it i mean we've all looked at the map of ein the map of ein is a continent you know Mm -hmm. it's it's not a planet unto itself and it's like and how all these things are connected how are they not connected and we have ideas about how to show even a little more like where these threads are running parallel and perpendicular and everything like that bulb di- bulb dim suggests jeff's brain is what we call it i love it no it's no it's <laughs> more than just my brain that's for sure um but yeah i i think it's something that that i has been so much fun to branch out and show sort of like here's how this connects to this it was so much fun with broken ring and stormborn to show kind of like well what time did this happen and yeah the feywild time is strange but but josephine's character showed up here and then she was there um Mm -hmm. and and i think we've certainly had some connections with the chrono dragons there's zozezera as the character in the stormborn chapters Mm -hmm. Uh, who seems seems an awful lot like Nonezeron. Not the same person, obviously, um, but they, wow, they, those two things are I way mean, too similar. literally came up with a name by just changing the N's and <laughs> flipping them to Z's. I mean, that was literally the, the you know, literally what, I mean, I, that doesn't the mean they're the same. The people demand more not, Z's. They're not, but they're not the same, but that was like, no. Nonezeron's was such a good name for a dragon. I was like, I've got to, I've got to give that, that, I got to hold that. So it was like, I w- it was Jared and I very early on. I was like, dude, what if we just turn the ends and make things <laughs> It's like, that's going to be great. <laughs> um, uh, so this yeah. is, this is all just kind of stuff and stuff that we're thinking about going into the future with you all. Um, be fun to use. I don't know, run in there somehow mm-hmm. or, you know, I don't know mm-hmm. something. Okay. I, I, like that. I like that. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Okay. All right. Okay, cool, cool. I'm writing this down. Gonna write it down. I don't know. Uh, amazing. Okay. Well, and mm-hmm. as we said, we can't go much later past one. I know we started a little late because technical issues. Ha <laughs> uh, But what are you going to do? Uh, but so I, I want to wrap up though quickly. We are going to do a dungeon rewatch tomorrow night. We're going to keep going with Mending of Magic because part one was so much fun. So if you are if you miss Amy Vorpal, if you miss Jessica's Brick and Katie Michaels' mm-hmm. Gus, I forgot. Oh, man. I forgot the joy of Katie Michaels' Gus. Uh, <laughs> we're going to keep watching that story tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to have a lot more fun coming up soon. Some big announcements coming up soon about where you're going to be able to see uh the dungeon run perhaps other places um and and things else of that nature um go to patreon patreon.com slash dungeon run we're putting up some amazing stuff up there uh as ron men- mentioned earlier he just put up the dm stat block for razar the shadow main uh who yeah was... technically lion can vampire lord demigod of blood how dare you uh so you <laughs> can use... well yeah. it's yeah. it's so that people can use it how they want either yes. you can use the full demigod yes. or you can just use the powerful vampire lord totally yes. up to you uh yes and you have more coming as well mm-hmm. uh yep. yeah i i think there are some more stat blocks coming and also some so we jeff i don't know if you know this we've got sponsors in eldritch foundry and Die Hard dice um and eldritch foundry is really one of the best places to make minis and design your own minis and have them printed on on this beautiful planet and uh ron's gonna help you print out your own version of of these characters he's basically going to be sharing the formula of how to create these minis is that uggo that's an uggo oh look at him beautiful these minis are are gorgeous um we've talked about them at the table and also and i've seen even more uh the elder foundry minis are stunning uh so there's a lot of great stuff coming to patreon i've got more games i think we got our next game for the patreon game coming up this sunday uh but there's more more stuff even happening um but yeah so be on the lookout I, i'm not kidding about those Baldur's gate 3 streams i obviously have some technical work to do to make sure i can work with my setup yeah uh, uh I, again let me know because i will jump in on with you yeah guys. i think we're I, gonna do maybe we should do i'll go james that'd be a i lot was of gonna fun. say it's maybe so we fun. just do an entire character creation stream of Baldur's gate 3 uh but, yeah but and be Heck on yeah. be on the lookout for schedule because we do want to get back around the table soon but as we've said we're very busy <laughs> uh uh also we have a couple of uh um uh, 
conventions that will be Thank heading up. Thank you. Here. I almost forgot because I saw JD you know. Illustrates. Um, I'm yeah. going to be at PAX East. People are already saying nice. City Racing Girl and Black Kakari are coming to Boston. I'm oh, going to be yeah. there. Are you going to be there? Come on. Let's have let's have yeah. a, a TDR hangout. Uh, yeah, JD Illustrates. Awesome. You're not far from there. Let's meet up, buddy. Uh, JD Illustrates and I have never met. And uh, I will be at WonderCon at the end of the yes. month as well. Uh, so make sure you guys uh, hit me up on the Discord. We'll meet up, hang out, go see some stuff together. Um, and uh, I do want, if you are hadn't heard it, uh, I will be a dad here eee! in the end of August. Adding Congratulations! Another, uh, thank you. Adding another family member to the TDR family. Oh, my Rowan, goodness. Rowan Reed Allison uh, at the end of August. Baby number wow. three born in the last Baby five years three. of the Dungeon Run. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. Congratulations, yeah. friend. This yeah, is buddy. wonderful. Uh, wonderful, you. wonderful. I'm excited. Wonderful. Uh, this has Very been exciting. such a joy, friends. Uh, I love you guys, yeah. and um, I love you, community members. This is, yes. you know, this is as we've said, it's a labor of love. This show, and uh, we're so proud of it, and we continue to uh, love telling the story with all of you, and continuing to look back and 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 be so proud of of what we've done. Uh, Somehow, I'm the only one that aged of the three of us. No, not true. Not true. <laughs> not true. <laughs> Go look at the fr we just were talking about it. Even the many of magic, like we are babies. <laughs> just a bunch of babies. But all of your aging <laughs> happened between episodes 18 and 19 of Campaign Watch. <laughs> yeah, you haven't aged since then. <laughs> since then, <laughs> that's yep. the other thing too. Is like the huge. I mean, like I I will measure certain parts of my life by dungeon run events. I mean, mm -hmm. not to, it's not. I mean, it's not dark, but the episode thirty nine. I will never forget being on the stage on the stage for episode thirty nine, which was our last in studio episode of the Heroes yeah. of Bingle, and coming mm -hmm. off stage at intermission, and people were like, "The NBA is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks has COVID," and we're like, <laughs> "What? Uh, yeah, that was wild." Uh, but yes, really, yeah, and so many massive events shared with all of you friends and your new friends as well uh it's mm -hmm. it's it continues to be a joy to see new people find and discover and embrace the story that we've been telling for almost five years mm -hmm. uh so stay tuned friends we're gonna have so much more fun stuff spread the word i know some of you uh, i see a lot of you in chat and it's so good to see all of you uh but yeah keep spreading the word and and the discord is active as ever um, and we're going to be sharing this, as as we said, uh, the the VOD of this is going up on our YouTube today. Normally, we like to keep them um, uh, exclusive to Patreon for a little bit, but for this one with this news and this this kind of, I, we wanted to share it with everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. So that'll so be on the lookout for that. Uh, yeah, anything else I'm forgetting? Because I probably am. <laughs> no, you mentioned our you mentioned our sponsors, so that's good. Yes, uh, you mentioned the Patreon. We did the. Uh, conventions i think that's it all right all right amazing jeff anything else what how it's like what just uh humankind be both oh mm, i miss you saying it <laughs> <laughs> all right i love you friends have a wonderful rest of your tuesday and we will see you soon okay talk to you later Ta -ta. bye